part. This is where our film critic from uh, somewhere in the U.S. is going to be talking to us about tomorrow night's movie. Do you ever watch the movie that we have on? Um, the movie we have on on Friday nights? Uh, no. Getting used to my new phone. There we go. I got it. I got it. <laughs> I got it. There, I did it. It went dark on me. I had to like... New people with phones. It's funny nowadays from young children. Can't have seen their fathers. Joe, it's Frank Delastrio. Hey, Frank. Film critic Kevin Russo sitting in with us tonight. Hello. Another film critic. God, I, I am really intimidated, but I'll do my best. Well, one thing I got to say before we start, I watched The Return of Perry Mason last night. Okay. Uh, well, your, names, your namesake was on trial. Okay. Della Street. Oh, yeah, Della Street. Well, as opposed to Della Street O. There's a family legend that uh, uh, Earl Stanley Gardner met at Della Street O, liked the name and used it, but I don't believe it, like I believe very few of my family legends. So. Uh, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to debunk, I'm gonna debunk the legend right now. Do you want to hear? Go ahead. I just wrote a big article on Earl Stanley Gardner. It was like his 122nd birthday. He was born in Malden, Mass, and I'm the reporter for the Malden Observer, the, uh, like, film and stuff. And there's a street called Dell Street in Malden. Okay. And he, grew, he was born in Malden, and so he created Dell Street from Dell Street. Okay, well, I never, I, as I said, I never believed the family legend. <laughs> well, sorry to debunk it, but you don't have to tell them. <laughs> I, won't, I won't tell Most of them that told it to me are dead, so I, I, but I won't tell it to anyone that's left. What is our movie? The movie is The Time of Your Life, uh, 1948, starring James Cagney. Oh, wow, we had his sister on a few weeks ago. Yes, uh, his sister is in this movie. And so you've had, you've had, uh, the last three movies have been two Gene Cagney movies, so that must be a record somewhere in the universe. And you've been uh, criticizing them, you've been critiquing them, so that's, that puts you in the history book. Yes, and uh, let's see, she usually played a good girl, but three weeks ago she played the femme fatale, and in this movie she plays a prostitute. So you're getting her, you're, you're specializing in the dark side of Gene Cagney. So congratulations. Hey, tune in tomorrow night, people, 9 o'clock for <laughs> the time of your life. And does she have the time of her life? Uh, well, I, I, think she, I think she reforms and settles down. So uh, depending on what you consider the time of your life, yes or no. Okay, a trivia question. Uh, James Cagney's top two movies of the 1940s were Yankee Doodle Dandy, for which he won the Academy Award, and White Heat, which is kind of the, the uh, film noirish classic. In between, he made five movies that are pretty undistinguished. And if you ever want to win a bet in a bar room, you ask someone to name the five of them. I can't do it. And, I, and this is the time of your life, uh, this week's movie is one of them. Oh, wow. And they're... And the reason is, um, Cagney for many years has been a Warner Brothers contract star, but after uh, Yankee Doodle Dandy, he wanted, you know, he wanted more control and all that, so he basically went out on his own, and he made a film a year for the next five years. None of them are all that impressive. I mean, Blood of the Sun, Blood on the Sun, excuse me, was, uh, was a hit to a degree, but none of them came close to his, his best movies, and then he went back to Warner's for White Heat. And uh, Jack Warner famously said, I need him and he needs me. And uh, commercially that was true. This movie, I think, is a matter of taste. I th when it came out, it was too high for the low brows, too low for the high brows. It was kind of a our town meets cheers. It all takes place in a bar, and it's an observations of, you, you know, different human stories. A lot of people come in and out of it. Uh, they put together a good cast. Uh, William William Bendix, one of my favorite actors, is the bartender, so he's he's got a big role in the movie. And J James Cagney is kind of a guy who's always there, watching everything and commenting on life, et cetera. William so, Bendix and Gene you know, Frawley, right? Uh, what TV show? Win William Bendix and Gene Frawley was it? Lucy. No, uh, William Bendix was Life of Riley. Life of Riley. Oh. Not to was... be confused with William Frawley, who was I Love Lucy. Thank you. I okay. love that show. I love Lucy. That's yes, a good uh, show. Sorry, to, sorry to get you off track. All right, sorry. Uh, okay, so um, and you know, Cagney made some good uh, good movies during the fifties. He made a, he made his best his best work was in the thirties, 
and he began and ended the 40s with two, his two classics, but in the middle there was kind of this uh, dry spell, and he was, you know, after World War II, a lot of stars went out on, the, on, the, uh, on their own. The contract stars were dwindling, so that's when Clark Gable produced his one and only movie, and uh, the, the big stars weren't necessarily tied to just big studios anymore. And some of them succeeded, and some of them never found themselves without the studio. And I think it's fair to say that at Cagney. He, uh, he, did, he did better at Warner's. He did better with that kind of backup rather than out on his own. Uh, the director of this is, uh, is I, I, I'm going to say Harry Potter. His name was Henry Potter. That's funny. Building this is, yeah, he's building this as H.C. Potter. And uh, he made one of the, the same year, he made one of the best films of the 1940s, Mr. Blanding's Builder's Dream House with Cary Grant, who was the poster child for stars going out on their own and being independent. And uh, that's a delightful film, and it's, it's one of the first films to talk about the stresses of moving from the city to the suburbs. And that's really his masterpiece on film. He was mainly a stage director. He had his biggest successes on Broadway, and he directed... He directed more movies than most people think, but uh, he, he, you know, he never had the signature movie. But and Mr. Blanding's builds his dream house is kind of it seems like an absurdist title, but when you see the movie, it's really a delightful comedy. And he he made that back to back with this movie. This movie again, I think it's a matter of taste. It never really found its audiences. It got some good reviews, some so-so reviews. I think the uh, as I, I didn't have time to check them all, but the TV movie guides, those big thick books you buy, oh, yeah. the movies listed, them, gives it more or less, uh, you know, so-so reviews. It's a, uh, you know, it, it, there's, there's no action in it really. There's uh, the drama hops from story to story, which is not everybody's cup of tea. But this was this was basically Cagney making the kind of movie he wanted to make. Your viewers will have to decide how much he how much he succeeded or not. Well, it's, it's, that's the great yeah. thing about Win Kim's movie night on Fridays, that we explore these. Uh, I think these w are worth, you know, putting out there again. I think that we get people thinking. Yeah, I, I know. I think, I think people who are lucky enough to watch your movie every week don't see the best necessarily, don't see the worst, but they're getting a real cross-section of American culture in mainly the first half of the 20th century. But, you know, you've had movies as late as 1980 in there, I guess. The TV movies tend to fall in the public domain. Why? I don't know. But uh, well, I've got to research that. I should research research that for us. That'd be okay, good. Well, well we're, we're, we're having too much fun to spend much time researching. <laughs> hey, where are you tonight? Uh, I'm in Monument Valley. Where's Monument and, Valley? Uh, in, uh, in Utah. Wow. And, uh, we're on, and I was lucky because 90% of today I didn't have any internet or uh, cell phone connection. I was getting really worried. But we got to a place, Goulding Lodge, which has Dead both. So, I, so when you told me the name of the movie, I could look it up. I saw it long ago, but, uh, but so long ago, I wouldn't want to do any more memory on it. And this is the site of many, uh, many Westerns were made here. John Ford in the late 40s, particularly like this area, era. So if you ever come here, you, uh, and I, and this is, this is listed as one of the wonders of the world, and, and until you get here, you don't appreciate it. Uh, but if you've watched old movies, if you've watched old westerns, you've seen this sooner or later. And if you watch John Ford, John Wayne movies from the late 1940s, you're going to get a good dose of Monument Valley, and you can see why they came here, because the vistas are just breathtaking. And one of the things I'm going to do tomorrow is visit a place called John Wayne's Cabin, where he stayed when he filmed here. And I wow. imagine it's not much, but I'm going to at least, you know, take that part of history. Well, Frank. Are you still there, Joe? Yeah, okay. I, I gave you 10 minutes tonight. We've got one minute left because, you know, you've been cheated some weeks, so I wanted to give you a full 10, and we got that. Yeah. One last question. Did you fly to Utah, or did you drive? We go from Houston to uh, Las Vegas and back. Ah, you flew. Uh, uh, and on the way, we stopped at old Tucson Studios, where a lot of westerns were made in the 30s. And it's now almost an amusement park, but when you walk in there, you can, if it looks familiar, of course, if you've seen old westerns, you've probably seen cowboys walking those same streets. Well, thank you so much, Frank. Thanks for being on Visual Thanks. Radio. Talk to you next week. Very good. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. And that's our show. Thanks to Anthony Gamari and our director, Jeff Dearman and Kevin Russo. 
our film critic uh, and Johnny Byers and Joel Rocker and Wink Cam, Dave Gauthier. Hey, thanks everyone.